In this video we're going to create this physically plausible ragdoll character that emulates soft tissue and muscle and ligaments and things and it will also be able to transition from keyframed to ragdoll and then back to keyframed again. If you remember at the 3d-illusions.co.uk website there's a more in-depth version available for you guys which you can download including the, uh, the scene files as well. And if you'd like massively faster cycles renders without the need to set up samples manually and also get better quality results then check out Turbo Tools, links are in the description below. So grab yourself a character, I'm using this one from blender.org demo files, give it an armature and then use the armature's edit mode to add new bones and position the existing bones along the geometry and make sure you name all the bones so that later on it's easier to find them when we're setting up constraints. And if you're not already a legend at rigging, check out this free course I've got on YouTube. At the end of that, you'll be an absolute rigging monster. And then parent the mesh to the new armature you've created with automatic weight. And now the character's geometry will deform when we move the bones in the armature's pose mode. Create an empty and set it to arrows. In the empties physics panel, make it a rigid body constraint and change it to be generic. Enable the linear limits and set them all for X, Y, and Z to zero. Put it roughly in line with the ankle and then duplicate it multiple times until you've got one at each joint of the character's armature. And then use the copy global transform add-on that comes with Blender to align each of those empties with the child bone. So if it's the ankle, you want to align it with the foot. If it's the knee, you want to align it with the shin, etc. Put the empties into a ragdoll constraint collection. Put the armature and the geometry that's parented to it into a new collection called ragdoll character. And then create a duplicate of the entire armature and character mesh and put that into a new collection called animatable character and hide that one. Create a cube and then place duplicates of it at each bone on your character's armature. And then edit the geometry so that it fits to your character's mesh roughly. Make each of those elements a rigid body, so object and then rigid body, add active. And for good organisation, put them into a collection called Ragdoll Geometry. And then add a floor using a plane and set that to be rigid body passive. And then we'll hide it so it's not in the way. And then for each of those rigid body constraints, we need to specify which two pieces of geometry they're going to hold together. So for each one, just set the first as the parent and the second as the child. So in the case of the foot and the shin, the shin would be the first because that's the parent and the foot would be the child. And then go through and do that for the rest of the constraints. And if we play it back now, we'll see they all fall down and they stay constrained to each other. But at the moment they're falling through each other. So we just need to make sure we turn on collisions for each of those constraints. So select them all and then go into the physics tab and just untick the box that says disable collisions. Next up, we need to make sure the body can only move in a physically plausible way. So for example, your elbow and your knee can only bend in a certain direction by a certain amount of degrees. So go through each of those constraints and based on the orientation of the constraint, set the angular limits so that the child can only rotate around it in a realistic way. And don't forget, if you are a member at 3d-illusions.co.uk, then you can just download my blend file if you want to compare my values with yours. And once you've set all those up, when you press play, the character should now be able to move in a more realistic way. And then use a bevel modifier on each of the ragdoll geometry parts so that it's a little bit smoother and rounded off on the edges. And now the collision with the floor should be a little bit more realistic. And just make sure you apply those modifiers to each of the meshes so that they're not calculating each frame. And then in the physics properties for each of those ragdoll parts, we can go into the dynamics section and we can emulate soft tissue such as fat, ligaments and tendons by using the damping translation and rotation values. You wouldn't normally want to dampen the translation, but you can try it out like here. Maybe for example, if you're falling through water. Looks like maybe this is what I do when I'm walking down the street. I tend to look behind me while I do a quick fart. <laughs> To get the armature to follow along with the ragdoll physics, what we need to do is go into the armature, into pose mode, 
and for each bone we'll add a child of bone constraint and set the target to be the corresponding geometry on the ragdoll. And very importantly, after setting each target, you must make sure you click on Set Inverse. And if we play this back, we're going to see we get a problem where the character bones sort of go all over the place. This is because we can't have any parenting on the armature. So select all the bones in the armature's edit mode, and then go into the bone properties, and then Alt-click the X in the parent box to delete the parent for all of the selected bones. And now when you play it back, you'll get the correct result. And if you want to, you can unhide the character geometry mesh now and see how this deforms. And so that we can give the ragdoll an initial pose, what we'll do, we'll make a duplicate of the animatable character armature, the one that's still got all of the, the parenting in place. And then to connect the ragdoll parts, we'll use child of constraint on each one to connect it to the relevant bone on that new armature that we've just copied across. So we'll do the foot geometry onto the foot bone of the new armature. And then the constraint, we're going to do that onto the foot bone as well. So the, basically the constraint is going to be targeted to its own child on the armature. So do that for all of the ragdoll parts, both the geometries and the constraints. And now we can use that new armature to control the initial pose of the ragdoll. One thing to bear in mind is, if when the simulation starts, the armature is not in the same pose it was in when you set those angular limits, then you will need to modify those angular limits again so that the limits are correct for the new pose. And now we can use this armature to actually move the entire ragdoll about as well, and so we can start it not only in a different pose but from any location in the 3D scene. And then you can start having fun with the character by building simple scenes to throw him around on. And something else cool we can do is actually set some of the rigid body objects, so the physics geometry, to be animated so that it actually stays controlled by the armature rather than the physics simulation. And that'll allow us to sort of manipulate and move the character around in real time. We could also use the damping value on one of the geometry parts to gently lower something down using physics. And of course, all the values in Blender are animatable, so we can animate it being, being initially dampened and lowered slowly, and then suddenly dropped off. So yeah, you can have some great fun with these ragdolls. You can create some really funny animations. All right, so now let's have a look at how we can get this ragdoll to take over from an animated character. And we'll start off by actually doing it with just one armature, we'll do it with the initial pose armature. So I'll just set up a very simple animation on this uh, initial pose armature, just so that it's legs coming up in the air. And just make sure very importantly that on the first frame, the armature is in the same position, the same pose it was in, when we set up the limits for the rotations. And then very straightforward, all we've got to do for each of the ragdoll physics geometries is keyframe the animated property to be on, until we want the physics simulation to take over and then we'll keyframe it to be off. And to avoid having to keyframe every single animated property for all of those geometry objects in the ragdoll, we'll create a custom property called animated on the armature and then we'll keyframe that single custom property and use it as a driver to control the animated property on all of the ragdoll objects. If you're new to drivers, check out the full version of this tutorial from the membership area at 3d-illusions.co.uk and I'll go into much more detail in that version. So we can view that custom property if we select the armature and then go into the item in the end panel, the item tab in the end panel, we've got the custom property at the bottom there, which we can now animate. So with animated enabled, we'll press I to add a keyframe, and then we'll find the point where we want the ragdoll to take over, so frame 35 in my case, and we'll just move this keyframe to the frame before, and then we'll go to frame 35, where we do want the ragdoll to take over, turn it off and press I, so that's now keyframed. And then just for tidiness, we'll move the on keyframe back to frame one. And if we play this back, you'll see the ragdoll will take over just as the foot gets to the top of that keyframed animation. And if you get any abrupt movements like this, where he's jumping up suddenly onto his toes when the physics simulation takes over, that's caused by the physics engine thinking the geometry is overlapping, either because it is, or because the margin is too high. So set the margin to zero, and that will use to fix it. If it doesn't, then just make sure your geometry isn't already overlapping, and just make necessary amendments. We'll set that to zero for the rest of the objects as well, on the ragdoll. 
And for the best results, we'll change each of the ragdoll meshes shape type to mesh. And with all those modifications made, we should now get a much smoother result. And something very weird that will happen is this. And even though there's no errors or you know dependency cycles reported in Blender's system console, it just seems to go berserk every now and then. And to fix it, just turn off the exclude from view layer checkboxes for any of the uh, ragdoll collections in the outline, and that will usually fix it, as we can see there. If it doesn't work, you just may need to do it a few more times, and you can even tweak some of the physics settings in uh, you know for one of the ragdoll geometries, and then put it back. And that will use the resolve it as well. You might need to do it a few times. Don't ask me why it happens. It's uh, it's a bit of a weird one. So next up, we'll see how we can get the ragdoll to take over from the animatable character, so from a different armature. And before you move on, make sure you've deleted all of the keyframes on the initial pose ragdoll armature. And with that done, we can unhide the animatable character. We'll choose this armature, and we'll move that across a little bit. Go into pose mode. Make sure on frame one and we'll press, we'll choose all of the bones, press I and we'll add a keyframe to those. If we go to frame 10, we can start giving this a simple animation. So maybe actually what I'll do, just for, just for fun, we'll go and add inverse kinematics to this one leg. So in edit mode, we'll add a new bone. Pose mode, choose that bone. And then in the bone constraints, we'll add inverse kinematics and give that a chain length of three so that this yellow dotted line goes to the top of the leg, indicating that this bone is going to control up to this point on the leg. And now we can move that to control all, the, all of those leg bones in one go. Okay, and uh, let's just continue giving this a simple animation. So something like that. And then we choose all the bones and press I to add another keyframe. So now we've got this animation happening on this character here. And because we're now using a different armature for the animation, we need to somehow get the pose from the animated version across to this initial ragdoll armature. And we basically need to make sure that, that they, they both match on the frame prior to the physics simulation, so the ragdoll version, taking over. So let's go to frame 10 on this one, and we'll go into pose mode, press A to choose all the bones, and then we're going to control C to copy the pose. So we can do that in here as well. Copy pose, control C. We choose this one and go into pose mode. If we control V, we can actually paste that on because all of the names, all the bones are named identically to this rig because obviously we copied it across. Add a keyframe, press I, and then we'll keyframe that animated property to be turned on on frame one. So add a keyframe there, turn it on, press I, and then we're going to go to frame 11. So the frame after where the poses match and turn this off and press I. So let's play this back. And there we go. And there is a problem as well. Because the ragdoll is in this pose when the uh, simulation starts, all of those limits we set up for the ragdoll constraints are going to be incorrect. So just make sure on frame one, you set the pose, you keyframe the pose to be the pose it was in when you set those constraints and then everything should work properly. And then finally, we'll just go into object mode. We'll choose this one in the animation tab, copy, and then we'll choose this one and paste. And then very straightforward, all you've got to do is make sure you only turn on the camera icon for the geometry that you want to be rendering. So for the first 10 frames, it's going to be the animatable characters geometry. And then after that, it's going to be the ragdoll geometry instead. And something that's useful to do to make sure you don't lose your, you know, your physics simulation, or if you just want to make little tweaks to it, is to bake the animation. So choose the armature, the ragdoll armature that is, into pose mode with all the bones selected, and then under animation, you can just choose to bake the action, and make sure you enable visual keying so that it takes into consideration the effect of the constraints, and don't tick clear constraints because you might want to revert back to the physics version. And then just click OK and it'll bake the frames in for you. And now this character's armature has gone ballistic. Let's play that back. You see, we're getting a really nice, uh, horrific result, which is pretty cool in itself. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. 
Yeah, but anyway, to fix that, we go into the physics, um, the bone constraint for the bones. Make sure you've got all your bones selected. And we'll just press Alt and, and click on this child of constraint. To turn that off for all of the bones. And now that's going to fix that because we don't need the bones now being controlled by the ragdoll geometry, the physics geometry, because it's now being baked into keyframe. So if we play this back now, we're going to get the correct result. And then you can quite simply go into Blender's graph editor and use its tools to tidy up the keyframes, either manually or with the smoothing options and things like that. If you want to go back to using the physics simulation, then you can delete all those baked keyframes for the armature. And then re-enable the ragdoll armature's child of constraints so that they follow along again with the ragdoll geometry. We're going to get a strange results, and that's because we need to reset the transforms of the bones in the armature. So just Alt-G in this case. We didn't do any rotations, but if we did, Alt-R as well. You can see what that does. It just puts the armature back to its original edit mode position. And if we just re-enable the child of constraints again and play this back, we can see the physics system is once again in control of the ragdoll character. If you want to start keyframing the character again after the ragdoll has fallen down, basically all you're going to need to do is get the animatable character to match the position of the ragdoll character. Now we can't use the copy pose uh, functionality that we used last time to copy one pose to the other because it won't work if there's a child of constraint on the bones like we've got here. And to avoid any sort of you know problems with the physics system, just make sure you bake the ragdoll character's armature like we did last time. Uh, again, visual key in enabled, don't clear the constraints. And then once it's finished baking, you can just turn off the child of constraint on all of those uh, bones for the ragdoll character's armature. So what we'll do instead of copy pose is select both armatures and then go into pose mode with both of them selected. And then we'll basically just use the copy uh, global transforms add-on to copy the position of the bones on the floor to the position of the bones of the animatable character that we're going to then use to do the keyframing. And you've got to make sure that you copy in order of hierarchy. So you need to start with the highest point, so the highest bone on the mesh. So for example, on here it's going to be the uh, the pelvis because that's a parent, that's the top level parent. And then you're going to go down each uh, chain of bones, so the legs and the arms, from the hierarchy from the top bone to the lowest, so from the upper arm to the hand from the thigh to the foot, and from the uh, pelvis to the head. And once you've got your animatable character to match the position of the ragdoll character where you want it to take over, just add a keyframe to the bone so you don't lose it, and then you can start animating the character as usual. And then once again, use the outliner to control which geometry is going to get rendered. And there we go, so that's pretty much the uh, entirety of my ragdoll knowledge. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel and also get some cool stuff for yourself, then you can become a member at 3d-illusions.co.uk or alternatively, you could grab yourself the Turbo Tools add-on, which will speed up your cycles renders and it's pretty popular, used in over 150 countries and by some pretty major studios as well. So thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one.